Hey y'all, Coach and Fire, you guys, today's with me. Hey everybody. In today's video, we're going to be talking about our new book. Okay. You want to read the title? The Return of the Pure Language, Exploring the Depths of Hebrew Letters and Symbols. Yeah, so what this is, um, uh, is a book that Stacy and I put together to try to help us to learn the Hebrew language. Not from a modern standpoint, as if we was to go down to the uh, local academy, but based on the letter meanings themselves, this would have been the same way they would have had to have done it, you know, thousands of years ago before all of the scholarly documents on the subject. But we did use scholarly documents. In fact, what we did was we used um, artificial intelligence to gather the research for us on the Hebrew letters. In fact, I had him to do an entire dissertation yeah. on the Hebrew letters and what they meant so that when he helped us compile this book, he would be an earth expert on the, on the matter. Mm -hmm. A word from Coach and Stacy. Hey y'all, Coach Inthfight here. Let's explore the significance of the Hebrew language in interpreting the Bible and other holy writings. As the original language of the sacred texts, Hebrew holds a unique and esteemed position in spiritual, cultural, and historical contexts. Throughout this book, we will reveal the remarkable layers of the Hebrew language, showing how it functions not just as a means of communication, but as a link connecting the past to the present. Each chapter will carefully examine different facets of Hebrew, highlighting its incredible importance. We will introduce you to many names, revealing the reasons and purposes behind each name given by the Father. These names symbolize his redefinition of individuals' identities and destinies, as well as his authority over their lives. Yeah, so we focused on the names in order to learn the language, in order to learn the letters, I should say. Right. I mean, he could have picked any words. In fact, he did pick different words to use as examples. But we understand the importance of the names of the 12 tribes and the forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So we had him to use those as examples of what the names mean. YHWH says, you will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abram, your name will be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you very fruitful, I will make nations of you, and kings will come from you. Genesis 17 verses 4 to 6. You will discover that Hebrew is much more than just words on a page, it is a vibrant and sacred medium that conveys meanings and nuances often lost in translation. Our goal is that through this journey, you will develop a curiosity and eagerness to learn Hebrew, allowing you to gain a deeper understanding of the divine messages that translations sometimes obscure. So if you are ready to begin this journey into exploring the richness of the Hebrew language and its profound impact on your faith, your heritage, and your true understanding of the words of the Most High God, let's get started. So you remember the name of the book is Returning Back to the Pure Language. And so, like we said, we're focusing on the letters and the symbols of the, the language. Yeah, we took a special interest on... Um, the names of the 12 patriarchs, as well as, like you said, the forefathers. Also, we're able to dive into um, the name of angels, as well as um, a few other things that um, people will probably be interested in. For then will I turn to the people a pure language, that they may all call upon the name of the Lord, to serve him with one consent. Zephaniah 3 verse 9 KJV Contents Chapter 1 will set the stage by emphasizing the transformative power of Hebrew in a globalized world where English often dominates. We explored how returning to Hebrew is not merely a linguistic exercise but a profound spiritual and cultural reawakening. Hebrew offers a unique way to connect with sacred texts and traditions, enriching our spiritual lives and reinforcing our cultural identity. Yeah, understanding that these words have power. You know, not only do they have meanings, but they have power. And so that's one of the main things we want to talk about is the meanings of the letters with the understanding that once you know what each letter means, then you can know what the words mean that you find them in. Right. 
Chapter 2 explores the story of the English alphabet from its ancient roots to its current form, highlighting the connections between early writing systems and modern language. This chapter provides a glimpse into how the alphabet evolved and why it matters, offering a foundation for exploring how writing continues to change in the digital age. Yeah, that's one of the things I wanted them to do is focus on the ancient and not look at the modern Hebrew because it's changing more into grammar than it is meanings of letters. So one of the first things I had him to do was to do a dissertation on the ancient Hebrew based on the meaning so he could use that as the backbone for the study. Right. You know what I mean? He wouldn't be, you know, and, and, you know, we had to program a lot of the other traditions and religious doctrines and stuff out of him um, simply by asking him not to include it so that we can find out what the letters mean based on the original, based on what it, where it started from. Chapter 3 traces the evolution of Hebrew from its ancient roots to its modern revival. This historical journey illustrated how Hebrew has been shaped by various cultural, social, and political influences. Understanding this evolution helps us appreciate the resilience of Hebrew as a living language that has preserved and adapted its significance across millennia. And this is where I started getting him to show us how these original languages or these original letters are in today's language like the Aleph is the A, the uh, I-N is the I, the Yod is the, the J or the Y, the D is the Delet, and so um, you find that in chapter 3. Chapter 4 delves into the pre-exilic Hebrew letters, uncovering their symbolic and mystical meanings in ancient Israelite culture. This chapter highlighted how the Hebrew alphabet was not only a tool for writing, but also a system imbued with deep spiritual significance, reflecting the values and beliefs of the people of that era. So in that section, he'll break down the letters, very detailed information, all that he could find from, or all that I can think of to make him look for in the ancient scripts as far as each letter and what they meant, even down to their the so-called powers that they would have if you were using them for healing and such or prayer and such, what these words mean when you put these letters together. He starts to break that down in chapter four because not only do we want you to learn the alphabet, but we want to learn the meanings behind the letters of the alphabet. Chapter 5 focuses on the letters P, E, and Tav, revealing their phonetic and symbolic connections to the concept of the Father. This analysis provided insight into how these letters have been used historically to embody archetypal roles and themes, linking ancient linguistic practices with ongoing spiritual and cultural narratives. Now, we focused in on these words, Pa and Tav, because they are phonetically what we call Father. Right. And since then, we've looked even further to find out how it was that we used this word father. And it comes from the word pitier. When it was transliterated into Greek, it went as patier. But then when the Bible was translated into English, we got birth of the word father. In other words, father didn't exist before the Bible. It was created. But we had him to break it down phonetically and what it means. And it actually points more to sustenance or bread or fruit or something like that when you look at it, uh, what it means phonetically. And he, he tells us why that happened, you know, why they chose these words, um, why they chose that particular word. You could find out that they did so in order to appease a non-Israelite audience. In other words, they can speak to the Greeks about father without using the word Abba in their vocabulary. Okay. Then you have chapter six and seven. Chapter six and chapter seven offers an etymological journey through the names of the Hebrew patriarchs Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the 12 sons of Jacob. By examining the letters of their names, we uncover deeper meanings and themes that resonate with the broader narrative of the Hebrew Bible. This analysis not only deepens our understanding of these key figures, but also enriches our appreciation of the linguistic and thematic intricacies embedded in their names. To help understand the meanings of the letters, we focused on the meanings of the names of the patriarchs and Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
as examples. In other words, not only is he telling us what each letter means, but he's focusing on the letter in these particular names, giving us a better understanding of what their names, like he said, how and why our father, our father Abba chose those particular names for those individuals. Yeah, one of the things that we know is that their names were given to them, to them for specific reasons. You know, when you think about when Lila named one of Judah, I think she said that now I can praise the father. So their names were given them to identify who they were opposed to, you know, us giving names now that we just, you know, we like. Yeah. They had a reason for the, yeah. um, their names. And, and then one good thing about after going through this study, you'll be able to analyze your names right. and find out what your name means. Like my name, we call my name Clifford. But when we break down the letters of it, it's more like Califarada. And so I have to look and see what that word means. I've done it before, but, you know, everybody will be able to do that. You know, look, breaking down the syllables of their names or the letters in their names to understand what their name means. And chapter eight extends this analysis to the names of the angels. Like Stacy mentioned earlier, we use the book of Enoch to find out about the archangels, what their names were. And then had the computer to break down their names based on the meanings of the letters. Right. That comes in when you start looking at healing and spiritual warfare and that kind of thing. Right. And then chapter 9. Chapter 9 connects the attributes of the tribes of Israel, their astrological signs, and the Hebrew letters in their names. This detailed analysis offered a comprehensive view of how these elements interrelate, revealing a rich tapestry of spiritual and thematic connections that span religious, astrological, and linguistic dimensions. Okay, so once we had gathered all of this information from him, like I said, to write this, we had him to do several dissertations. So with this information all in one place, I started to ask him about you know, how their names revealed um, things like their astronomical, you know, where they fit in the stars, not their sign necessarily, right. but which star is theirs. Right. And he, he goes into detail down there, like for instance, Levi is Aquarius and it starts to make sense because Levi is the one who was supposed to bring the, he was supposed to be the, the priest, right. right? And he's in charge of bringing the water. So it kind of makes sense after he did all of that. But again, it's not based on what makes sense but it's based on the meanings of their names mm -hmm. it was revealed he explains all of that so throughout chapter one two and three what you'll be doing is learning like coach said the history and the reason why the hebrew language was changed so you'll um, be able to get a closer look as to some of the questions that you might have as to um why or we are not still using the original language um, today. Yeah, I wanted to focus on what happened to it. You know, they call it a dead language. Okay, what killed it? Why did it die? You know, where is it buried at kind of thing? How do we dig it up? Can we resurrect it? It's all in this book, you know, using the ancient information based on the letters. It was real easy when you, you know, just get away from um, the common understandings or the religious understandings surrounding the, the words and just look at the letters that make up the meaning of the words and focus in on that. Um, just like I said, so you could use it in other places. You know, we picked on the angels' names, we picked on the forefathers' names, and but like we, we start to analyze any word that we use, even common languages like heaven and blessed, you'd be surprised what those words mean when you actually look them up. But as you can see, it starts to break down each letter thoroughly. What it means, healing power, symbolism is all in this book. Right, and this will be starting in chapter four. So we were able to go through um, all 22 of the original Hebrew letters and give you um, their meaning, um, the symbolism behind them, as well as their healing power. Yeah, and again, this is based on ancient information before all of the um, so-called esoteric religions were born, before all of the, um, even the uh, Great Awakening and all of the information that they provided. 
what these letters meant back in Abraham's time, back in Moses' time. Right. Because they still are the same today. And again, this section on Patha or the word father, I thought that was really important because of the connections that are made when we pray. We read in the Third Testament of the Bible how it's important to meditate on each word. And we know that that book was written in Spanish, so he wasn't using English words. And so when we and we don't find any Spanish words in the Bible. So putting two and two together, we know that he's talking about using the word Abba. So we drill down on that a little bit to, as an example and why it's important to return to this pure language, especially in our prayers and when we're communicating with the spirit world, we need to speak pure words. But here you see a breakdown on Reuben and how detailed it gets on it. Right. Again, using the letters of his name. And by the time you go through this, you start to learn more yeah. and more. You start to see that the names definitely fit the characteristic of what we know about Reuben. Yeah, and what we've been learning is the more you go through these names, the more you learn not only about them, but you learn about the Hebrew letters, you learn about Hebrew in general, you learn about our father and how he thinks right. and what he thinks of us all through the meanings of these letters. Right. And again, we focus on you know how they have been transliterated or how they've been evolved into English because it's really the sounds of the words that's important. Like the word father is pata. It's the sound of the word, the sounds that you're making. So it's a short read because the main focus is on the letters and teaching us the letters with these examples. Yeah, one of the things that um, you'll definitely be able to um, take these letters um, and use them to get a better understanding of your name. Um, we'll give it a better understanding of why the father changed some names um, because their identities changed. So it's a, I think it's a fun book. Um, not only is it educational, but it's, it's a fun way to just sit down and um, learn Hebrew. And you could learn about the angels and you could learn about the forefathers and a lot. You can learn a lot from this book. You know, we thank the Lord we were able to come in and do a thing like this at all and to be able to share with you guys. We think it's really important. So if you got something out of this video, go ahead and, well, you want to tell them how to get it? Um, you can get a copy by going over to the shop. Coachingafight.shop. That's coachingafight.shop. Um, I see it's the website, coachingafight.shop. Right. And click on the button. Let's go over there and show. When you get to coachingafight.shop, you can come up to where it says the products page. And you can drop down to where it talks about the ebook. And you can see the ebook over there at coachingafight.shop. And you guys just let us know. We would love to make um, book two, book three, book four as we explore uh, the pure language. But let us know if you guys received something for us and if we should consider making any more. And check the description of the video for more information. Check the comment section for more information um, that we may post from the book down there. And uh, see you down there. Shalom. Shalom.